Hey guys, it's Brian from Team Aquascape and our channel is all about transforming outdoor living spaces with water features. Design and installation is who we are and building backyard dreams is what we do. All right guys, this is an exciting one. This is a front yard water feature. Yes, I'll say it again, a front yard water feature. Very rarely do we get the opportunity to do stuff like this 98% of the time our water feature is in the backyard. The tricky part of the design is who is it for? Like so many times we're trying to make it visible from inside the house. So on cold days, rainy days, super hot days, they can still enjoy it. Uh, often a front yard water feature is just all about curb appeal. We're bringing in some heavy equipment. Uh, not all jobs need heavy equipment. And so I don't want to discourage a lot of you DIYers out there that you need heavy equipment for the job. But this particular job we do. So here we go, or first thing we do every single time is lay it out. You saw that little rectangle area. That's where our aqua blocks are gonna go for our palmless waterfall feature. You can see this kind of amoebic shape that we're digging out. The amoebic shape is to give it more of a natural shape. There we are laying out those aqua blocks inside that amoebic shape. Fabric's gonna go down here and then the liner and then our vault and everything else. Now this system's actually much smaller than what we needed to be. They weren't interested in letting it be winter running, just needed it big enough to operate the entire system and uh, make sure it works. After we get that liner in, the fabric in, the uh, aqua blocks and we start setting boulders and this is exactly why we have the machine out there the machine is there to set these big boulders again you could build this out of all hand sized rock and it looked fantastic but uh, this particular client loved Pennsylvania Fieldstone loved the way it looks and so do I after we've got some of those big rocks in then we'll often backfill we're always over excavating the area so we have the flexibility of setting those big rocks don't feel like you have to set to the excavated area. We almost always do this. Over dig, set our big boulders, and then backfill back up to them. It just allows us a lot more creative freedom. One of the hardest things about this project was the tight access. Like It looks like we have a ton of access because of the front yard feature, but just recently they put in a brand new paver pathway to the front yard, and you can see here where the machine is sitting on an unfinished driveway. So we couldn't really drive on that. We could drive up and down the driveway, but we still had to hop across the paver area there over the plywood pathway. Here we are just kind of filling some stuff in. Often we'll leave gaps, like if the joints of the boulders won't fit, we just leave an intentional space and then we can come in with either big gravel or cobbles and do some little washes, do some landslide type looks. Here's a perfect example. The big giant Pennsylvania Fieldstone didn't match up just right, so we leave the gap and then we'll just come in and fill it with some cobbles. It looks better that way. Um, it breaks up the monotony of all the big, big boulders. All right, so this is a little unique. We didn't know exactly how to hide the pump vault. So we had this uh, old stump sitting back here. We brought the stump, it just worked out perfect. We're just gonna kind of wedge this thing in here, get it to sit around some of the rocks. Gotta make it look like it belongs. So we're always like carving it to fit right in making it look like it kind of grew out from around the boulders. Continuing edges, you can see how we're folding the liner up against the back of the boulders. We're also gonna come in here and compact that soil really, really well. We always leave a little extra liner just in case we have to pull liner up a year later, 10 years later. We leave about six inches of extra liner past the, the edge of the boulders. All right, now we're gonna start in the stream. So the reservoir is basically done. We always kind of start at the bottom, start at the reservoir, and then work our way towards the waterfall. So our next step here is to kind of lay out where we're gonna be digging. Again, we're gonna over dig because of the size of the Pennsylvania Fieldstone. When a couple guys are digging, uh, we can tidy up some of our other stuff. Here's Jack putting in the pumps. Particular pump is gonna be uh, two to four. It's a 2,000 to 4,000 gallon per hour pump. When we're sizing pumps, I'm sizing the pump based off of aesthetic. So what do I want the stream to look like? This particular stream is designed to be way more of a bird loving stream. And so we don't need this thing to be gushing water all over the place. I would have loved to see this with a larger pump on there, but this is exactly what the client wanted. And uh, and I don't disagree. I mean, it's, it looks really good. So just gluing up some of our fittings, measure everything up. Jack will get an elbow on there and then we'll continue on with uh, digging. Hey, now that's an important shot right there, that orange shovel there, one of the most important tools we have. Like it's great to have our spade, but that orange shovel just helps us cut through roots, get through hard soil, and then get everything nice, clean, and straight and flat. Uh, a lot of times with the digging, uh, the foundation work is just as important as the rock placement. If you don't have the foundation set, 
the, the rock placement becomes very, very difficult. So of course, we're gonna pad everything. You got uh, some fabric going down before the liner goes down. Now here, Chris is working on prepping the area for a small retaining wall. Again, I said the entire grade change on the space only had about three inches. So we wanna get a little bit more height out of our waterfall. We wanna get about 15 inches. So we're gonna come in here, build a little retaining wall because I can't have soil pitched towards the house and I can't definitely can't have soil stacked up against that brick um, or the foundation. We could cause some serious problems in the basement if they were to get a rain. So we're gonna come in here, put a, a little tiny retaining wall. The whole retaining wall is maybe eight feet long. Uh, just enough to get us uh, a little bit of height out of our waterfall and protect that house from the soil and erosion. Just like I was talking about before with digging the foundation, setting a retaining wall is all about the base. Get a nice base in there, get it level, and then uh, set that first course, make sure it's perfectly level, and then every course after that will be easier and easier. All right, now comes the fun part. Look at the size of these rocks. Now, these are huge, enormous rocks. In fact, even the customer was a little taken back on the size of the boulders that we brought out. But uh, the big giant rocks, especially with the Pennsylvania Fieldstone, look really, really cool, make it look natural. It's really hard to work with. Like the cost of this project definitely went up quite a bit because of the choice of the stone. Not just because the stone is expensive, but because the amount of time that goes into setting these big rocks. Here I'm showing Jack some different dance moves. Yep, a little bit over here to the left, a little bit to the right. Step up, do the Captain Morgan. No, we're just kind of laying out uh, exactly what we want to do with these boulders. I want to have a game plan on how these things are going to sit together before we strap them up and bring them in. Make sure we've dug out enough space for them. And then I want to share the vision with Jack and the rest of the guys. Or we're just doing more dance moves. <laughs> All right, so strapping up the boulders, usually pretty easy. Uh, we use a continuous loop strap, try to find that middle point. You find that middle point, then make that the cinch spot, wherever you want the top of the rock to be. I think Jack's gonna be a little off here. Yep, you can just tell. So you can see how the left side wasn't coming up. In Jack's defense, sometimes these flat rocks can get a little tricky on uh, finding exactly where the center is. Now we're gonna pitch this just a little bit because I want that left side of the rock to stay dry and then where Jack's left hand is to actually try to get uh, some water maybe over that. And then you can see the, the V and the two lower rocks. So water's gonna kind of roll over that. Here we are to make sure everything holds. We put some gravel underneath there. That'll give us a nice solid base. Often you can even see on the bottom left corner there where Jack's got uh, his hand, he's got a uh, granite boulder in there. Just giving it kind of a kickstand so it won't fall in. Then we'll come in underneath all that, fill that with more gravel and we'll be good. We're gonna grab another rock. That'll be our other frame boulder. This one's got a lot of character with the moss and everything else on it. It's almost always tapered. So there's almost always a natural high spot that tapers down to a natural low spot. It's uh, it can, it can look absolutely amazing. It can look pretty bad if done wrong too. It can take on a very man-made look if stacked or put around as a coping stone around a pond. You guys have heard me say this a thousand times, let the rock kind of talk to you. And here we know that the rock wants to go like this. So even though we over dug, I can tell we gotta dig out a little bit more for this thing to sit just right. Uh, stone was a little bit bigger, so here we are just kind of marking out where we're gonna dig. We'll get that dug. You can see why this would be so much more time consuming than using hand-sized boulders. When you're using machine-sized boulders, it's literally one rock at a time. So it's hard for everybody to be working. Like Chris over there just standing on his shovel. We'll over dig a little bit more than we think so we don't have this problem again. You can see those stumps are gonna be a problem, but uh, we'll get through it easy enough. Here we are just compacting that soil. Notice the bag around the tamper. The main reason that bag's around the tamper is the soil is super sticky and muddy and uh, the plastic bag just keeps that soil from uh, compacting onto our compactor. All right, pull this liner back, get our fabric down get everything nice and protected. We'll try this rock one more time and it should fit in like a dream. All right, here we are just trenching for our plumbing. Uh, we wanna kinda get this thing set. Uh, once that rock's gonna get in there, it's gonna get a little tight in there. So we're just gonna get this pipe in really quick. Often when we're doing our plumbing too, we're thinking of uh, where the plants are gonna go. Sometimes we'll take that trench a little deeper. Uh, for me, everything is about the plants. All right, this waterfall's gonna look so awesome when it's running. Um, just the way those joints are matching up right there, the way the elevations are sitting, 
Uh, it feels really solid, but still one of my favorite things of all time with uh, building these waterfalls and streams is you have an idea of what the water is going to do and you just hope it does what you want it to do. And that's the most exciting part is seeing your vision kind of come together. All right, so here I am cutting the fabric. You know, we put all that fabric down to cushion the rocks, make sure we don't put a liner in there. And then I need to seal it. And then I need to foam underneath the fabric and on top of the fabric. And the other thing I need to do is make sure I really pinch that liner down as I foam it. Otherwise what happens is there's like an air space in the liner and the, and the rock there and uh, the foam, it will expand, but when the water comes through, the water will actually push the liner back down, causing a gap. So I put a lot of gravel down, making sure that that liner sits nice and flat. There's no air gaps underneath the liner. It kind of fills that space up. I moisten it down just a little bit. I like to put a little mister on the garden hose there. The foam actually says it, uh, it'll cure better if the rocks are just slightly damp. So I kind of missed it, wash all that dust off the gravel, and come in here and cut uh, what we call like a bib liner to go over the top of the gravel. So here I am trimming that up to fit exactly to the contours of the rocks. And I come back in, foam it, and then I'll place that fabric right back over the top of that foam. And kind of press that down. I even like to get that fabric just a little damp. It'll actually help bond everything together really, really well. Oh, yeah. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> so I put gravel back down over the top, hide the fabric, and that'll secure that fabric in there so it won't move around at all. Once the foam's dry, it's really like concrete, like it, it'll be good for life. So here's Jack getting ready for the plumbing to come into the back of the spillway. It's really pretty easy. You just put the spillway right where you, wherever you want the waterfall to start. Really important when you're tightening this, we just go hand tight. Uh, you can thread that thing almost all the way in. If you use a wrench, Sometimes you can over torque it and it'll actually split the bulkhead fitting. Here we have to use an elbow. That flexible pipe is pretty flexible, but not flexible enough to make that turn between the spillway and that wall. And then come in and immediately start packing with soil around it, making sure that all that stuff stays nice and tight. And there's that spillway, Jack's just using a little bit of gravel to level off the bottom and get it exactly to the elevation that we want it at. And then we're gonna come over that spillway with another one of these flat rocks. So it looks like the water almost comes out of a cave. Andrew just finishing up some of the edges, adding some gravel here, we're gonna foam that whole little pocket where Jack's hand is. And now we're just doing a lot of aesthetics. You can see the light down there in the bottom, mixing up some big gravel with little gravel so it's not all the same look everywhere. Things are looking pretty good right now. Giving everything a rinse down, we'll pump that dirty water out, and hopefully fire this thing up here in the next couple minutes. Moment of truth here. Now that is a bird loving stream. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We love building these little streams like this. That was an expensive stream just because of the stone that we used, the amount of time that it takes to put all of that stuff together. But tell me what your favorite part is. What did you like about the stream? We'll see you guys again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.